I'm Bill McWilliam, president of Cascadero Copper, CCD on the TSX Venture Exchange. Cesium is one of the world's rarest metals with a growing industrial demand. Drilling is underway on our Tehran property in Argentina to prove up a cesium resource. Cascadero's patent pending leach process has the potential to make Cascadero the lowest cost supplier of cesium in the world. Visit our website, cascadero.com or phone us at 604-924-5504. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Christopher Mullen. His website is TheGoldAndOilGuy.com. Welcome back to the show, Chris. Thanks for having me, Jim. What's happening with the equity markets right now? The equities market, uh, you know, they've been taking a breather uh, for the last... uh, uh, about a week and a half or so, and uh, we we had a huge gap up there when Trump uh, spoke one evening, and the market gapped up the next day, had a huge rally, and it was kind of a you know an emotional news based uh, pop in the market, which in most cases anything that goes straight up based on some type of news event usually comes straight back down, and that's what's happened over the last uh, few days. Now, right now, the equities market, like the SP 500, is trading right at a critical support zone. It has found support. And it's holding at support, and it is oversold as of today on Tuesday to the downside. The there's there's two ways it could go here. Obviously, we could see it rally and we go to new highs, or we could see the market roll over here and have a leg to the downside. And based on technical analysis, the intraday price action and what we haven't yet seen in the equities market, which is panic selling, uh, it goes to tell me that I have a feeling we're going to see a big drop. Uh, later this week in the market, because uh, even though the markets have corrected quite a, quite a few, the, about uh, uh, 50 points uh, from the recent highs, the SP 500, we haven't seen the, the VIX really jump. We haven't seen fear take off, and we haven't seen any panic selling on the NYSE. And I, I use a custom indicator, uh, which is more or less the NYSE uh, down volume divided by the up volume. And when that ratio reaches three or higher, it tells me. If, you know, there's people running to the door and typically if there's three people selling to every one person buying a share, that's kind of the majority. And we're just starting to see that today. We have got uh, more or less five people hitting the sell button on shares on the big broad uh, name stocks uh, versus one person only buying. So we're starting to see panic in the market. The VIX is up today. Uh, the, sh- the intraday pattern shows I, I think we're going to see a sharp drop probably uh, in the next one uh, to three days. And we're going to see this ratio spike up even higher. Everybody's going to panic. The VIX is going to spike up. And I think that's going to be the cleanse that we need is this final dip in the market. Uh, nothing big, just a, a couple percent to the downside. And then I think we're going to see it continue to start running. Uh, it's working its way higher again. But um, you know, right now, it's at a critical level. And it looks like we're going to have a little washout panic low here and get everybody who's been adding to their longs and buying and buying more stocks, they need to get shaken up. They need to take some losses and get spooked out of the market to kind of re-energize it for the next move up. That's what I'm looking for is some fear because we like to buy into fear. Is there a, an index that actually measures the fear quotient? Well, there's the VIX index, which has been referenced as the fear index. And, uh, you know, it, I, I do follow that, and it, it is up about nine uh, percent today. But really, we need to see a big jump. We need to see like the VIX jump, uh, you know, seventy, a hundred percent. That would be a big uh, move in the VIX. That signals that there's been, you know, mass fear in the market. And I think we could actually see that. I think the market is setting up for that potentially this week or next week for that kind of washout low where the fear index spikes up and. There's this saying, when the VIX is high, it's time to buy. And that's what we're looking for is this VIX, the spike in fear. And when the VIX spikes, that means everybody's panicking and we want to buy. And uh, and then the market should kind of find a bottom and bounce. And, you know, there's a great there's a great way to take advantage of these standout, these big spikes in the VIX. Anytime you get one of these big jumps in the VIX of 50 or 100 or 200 percent in the VIX, you can actually short the leveraged inverse ETFs, which uh, they lose value over time because of Contango, the way they're built with uh, running futures contracts on the VIX. 
So when you get these standout spikes in the VIX, you can short the long ETFs and you can make a killing because the VIX always, eventually will always come back down and, uh, and it won't always trade up in those lofty prices. You just have to be able to handle the volatility while price, the VIX is spiking around for a few days, but it'll always fade back down. So that's the nice thing about playing the VIX is um, if you can get a hold of these standalone vi uh, spikes, they only happen a few times a year, they do provide very quick, huge gains for those who uh, know how to take advantage of them. As you said, if you know how to take advantage of them, is it risky for the average person? It is very risky for the average person because, uh, you know, most people don't understand position management. And the problem with the VIX, especially if you're using a leveraged inverse ETF to take full advantage of the contango, where it's naturally going to lose value and uh, you want to short it, which means as it's losing value, you're actually making money. Uh, there is a trick to it because if the VIX jumps 300 or 100%, which it does very often, these leveraged two or three times VIX ETFs are jumping 200, 300%, which means if you put too big of a position size on, you could have almost nailed the timing, but by the close of that day, you know, you could be offside by two or 300%. You could get a margin call and get closed out at the absolute worst possible time for a VIX trade. So it's all about much, you know, very small positions. It's uh, just a, one of those tricks that you need to have in the bag, one of those trades that when they happen, you know how to take advantage of it. You don't get greedy because you don't want to blow up your account, but you want to make some quick, uh, decent gains uh, that you can stomach those, those volatility returns because, you know, you could be, you could draw down 100% on your trade uh, over the next one or two days, but three days or four days later, you could be up. Uh, you know, 200% or more. So you just have to totally be able to stomach this um, wildness in the market of that type of animal. We'll have more with Christopher Mullen right after the break. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 7 7785744444 Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, gold miners, what is happening with their stocks? Yeah, gold and gold miners, uh, they got overbought there uh, last month, and we saw more or less gold miners underperform for a while, while physical bullion continued to move up for both gold and silver. And uh, usually if gold miners underperform, we usually see bullion prices uh, collapse, and that's what happened. Gold miners were underperforming. Then gold broke down, and then gold miners collapsed. And uh, today, you know, over the over the last week, gold miners pulled back into a support zone, and they actually had a, a pretty decent little bounce over the last couple of sessions. But today, gold miners are rolling over. The average miners down about four uh, percent today. And uh, I think I think we're going to see gold and miners continue to flounder and probably move a little bit lower over the next uh, uh, week or so. Overall, I have a feeling gold and silver and miners are going to, I have a feeling they're trading more or less in the middle of a range. We could go back and test the lows that we saw back in December, uh, 2016 December. Uh, we could go in and put in a double bottom. The technical analysis points to a potential double bottom. And, um, it, you know, I wouldn't call it out of the cards. Right now where the price is trading, uh, which is between the recent highs from a few weeks ago and those December lows, I think we're going to be stuck in this big sideways channel uh, for a couple months, several months. I think we see the equities markets start to stall out in June, July, and that is when we're going to see money actually start to roll into, I think, these safe haven plays like gold miners and bonds and, um, and gold and physical metals themselves. So 
you know, to me, gold and silver, I'm not a fan of the charts right now. I think they're going to be trading in a big range, and there's not a lot of accuracy in trying to trade them the way those patterns have set up. So just kind of letting them unfold. I don't see too much. Uh, there could be some fireworks and pretty big moves, but I don't see anything being very predictable at this moment. Some of the people who went to PDAC in Toronto told me that the mood there was positive, but the, the investors aren't looking for just automatic kill shots anymore. They're actually looking long term. Is that what you're finding? Yeah. And you know, that, that kind of, that kind of bodes well with kind of the big picture of what gold and gold miners are doing. If you look at the, the weekly chart or the monthly chart, you kind of step way back and get that kind of 40,000 foot view. Uh, you know, the market looks like it's put in a bottom. It looks like it put in a bottom, uh, back in, uh, 2015 in October or December there. Uh, and you know, we had a huge rally out of it and the market right now is just consolidating and kind of digesting. Really, we've seen a move down. We've had a little bounce, and now we're having another move down. And I think we go down for a little double bottom from the December lows, maybe a little bit lower there. Uh, and I, then I think the market will be recharged. But the chart, the long-term chart, is exactly what you just said. If I look at it as an investor, I'm looking at long-term value, which companies actually are going to go into production or who are producing and who uh, who are going to benefit the most when gold price starts to take off because that's what this chart is showing. It's showing us, well, we still have several more months of, of somewhat sideways weakness, but the big picture here is showing gold and gold miners exploding in value and taking off. So you just have to be able to hold something that's going to hopefully hold up its value until the, the the kind of tide changes but you know the big picture is very bullish on the monthly chart for gold silver and miners it's just a matter of hanging in there long enough for that to come to fruition is there a seasonality to gold there is but it's i found it's kind of all over the place um yeah there you know there's seasonality to kind of almost every commodity but they never move as they should. It's just the way it is. You know, there's always some times where we're going to see weakness and strong, a bit stronger of a market. But in the grand scheme of things, uh, you know, I, I don't look at the, the seasonality too much. We'll have more with Chris Vermeulen right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Keep informed. Receive our weekly recap of thought-provoking articles, podcasts, and radio delivered to your inbox for free. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage, HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, is there any real movement in natural gas right now? Yeah, you know, natural gas, It uh, the long-term picture of natural gas, it looks as though it's it's trying to put in a significant bottom. Uh, it's kind of the same as uh, kind of gold in the sense that it's down near the lows. It's kind of working itself out. It, uh, you know, it's had a nice bounce, a nice rally the last couple of weeks, but it's been in a very tight range. And today we're seeing natural gas down about uh, 4%. And I, I think we could see natural gas pull back a little bit more. I think when you have these tight little ranges where the market runs kind of on a very a 45 degree angle but in a very narrow range typically when you get a breakdown from that you get expansion and that's what we're seeing today i think we could see a little bit more over the next couple of days but you know the monthly picture of natural gas looks really bullish we're trading down at the critical uh, support zone moving averages this pullback has been taking place on lighter volume the last couple of months which is a good sign. It means there's not a lot of distribution selling or short selling of the market. It's just people taking profits and it's fading back down. I am bullish on natural gas uh, going forward here. So I think there's, I think there's some nice, some good potential in it. I just think, uh, near term next week or so could be a little bit of a, a shaky market still. Well, one analyst I talked to said, well, natural gas is going to have a, a real quick spike because of this perfect storm that's forming on the eastern seaboard 
where two major cold, uh, wet, snowy systems are about to hit. And then he said the long-term forecast is for a very hot summer, which means air conditioners on at full blast. So natural gas wins either when it's really cold or really hot. <laughs> yeah, potentially. You know, well, natural gas is such an efficient fuel. And uh, unfortunately, well, it depends how you look at it, but, you know, there's so much supply that, uh, you know, the, the, it's been really hit hard. But, uh, yeah, natural gas, I think, is going to do really well uh, going forward. I think it uh, just has some short-term weakness here. But overall, I'm, uh, I'm bullish on natural gas looking forward the next year. Crude oil was trading in the $50 plus range for the longest time. It's now below that. What's the story for crude oil? Yeah, the last time we spoke, we talked about crude oil and pretty in, in depth about this this coiling formation that it had been in making. It was kind of ri- running up this rising trend line and it kind of had a cap top under around that. It hadn't closed above more or less $54.45. And it was getting squeezed sideways into this narrowing formation. And the longer something trades sideways, the bigger the move when it breaks out of it. And we talked about um, either way it breaks, it's going to be a big move. And the downside target will be $47 per barrel, uh, which is what we talked about two weeks ago. And today it hit $47 a barrel. It dropped from uh, more or less $53 down to 47 in five trading days on huge selling volume and that and there's huge selling volume because so many traders had been buying preparing for a breakout to the upside the chart long term looks really bullish but everybody saw that and everybody was accumulating and the market always likes to flush out the longs and shake them out and so we got this breakdown and we've had follow through selling and it's still falling i actually still have i have i have the main kind of critical support bottom here at 40 46 dollars a barrel so there's still potential for it to shake around for the next few days it's this price the 46 if you were to go from the daily chart which we were just talking about this this drop and breakout you go to the weekly chart we are actually 46 dollars is a long term a year long support trend line it's a critical level that if it's tagged we should see a significant bounce off it and potentially that could be the bounce that could bring us all the way back all the way uh up into the $60 per barrel mark. So we could get back to those highs that we saw back in early 2015. So I think there's a lot of upside potential here for crude oil. It's doing a perfect shakeout. It's washing the market, huge volume. I think a lot of people were expecting a break to the upside and they're all getting stopped out. And now everyone seems to be shorting it. So they're getting very bearish, expecting lower prices. And that's the fear that we want. And now we're looking for a potential entry point later this week. There's also an interesting commodity that you're keeping an eye on. Yeah, we've been following the the Coca ETF or the Coca commodity for um, really uh, several weeks, and we've been watching it trying to. It's been forming a bottom. There's been huge volume moving into this sector, and it, it's uh, if you go way back in time, go multi years back, you know it's broken down to multi year lows, and uh, we're getting to this point where the caught data. And um, volume, everything is starting to signify that we're hitting an extreme. There's massive shares changing hands. There's huge emotions going on. When you usually have a big spike in volume, it means it's emotional trade. There's people finally giving up on something, and there's a whole bunch of other people finally saying, I will buy in. And you get this big churning of shares or contracts. And that's what we've been seeing with this commodity. And the monthly chart is a very attractive, oversold chart that uh, we've started to see a big bounce uh, a bounce start to take place that still has potential about you know 20 30 percent upside potential uh going forward here in there in the next month or so upside so we've had a nice bounce the last uh, three days in coca it's trading it's right at short-term resistance where if it can break today's high more or less and close above here then we could be off to the races for a significant uh, a bottom has been put in place potentially here today, uh, and we're going to see the market rally. Chris, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, always a pleasure, Jim. Thanks for having me on the show. My guest has been Chris Vermeulen. His website is thegoldenoilguy.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our popular YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. 
comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.